y'all. So I'm super excited. I just went and picked up my trailer. Or actually, I had it delivered to me because um, the process when I went to go pick it up was I was going to record it because I was so excited. But I was a little bit disappointed when I got there because the, the truck that I was hauling the trailer with the trailer light hookup would not work so I had to make I got the trailer from Douglas Georgia so it was about a six hour drive from where I'm currently located so we drove six hours all the way there to pick up the trailer we found out that the trailer light hookup would not work so we drove six hours all the way back and I finally I just I said I'm not gonna make another six hour trip I was super disappointed with how that one turned out but you know what um, when you when you decide you want to do something and you go for it, sometimes there are hurdles along the way and it's just something that you have to deal with. So I ended up paying a small delivery fee because, you know, it was about a six hour drive um, and the trailer has just been delivered. So it's sitting outside. I'm super excited. I took a couple of pictures, um, but I wanted to come in and talk to y'all because it is raining right now, unfortunately. Um, so like I said, I got the trailer from Douglas, Georgia at a place called Boss Cargo. They were super, super easy to work with. I'm a fanatic about the prices. It's, it's a big trailer hub. If some of you aren't familiar, it's a big cargo trailer hub over there in Douglas, Georgia. So they are able to sell really awesome, um, decked out cargo trailers for really really good prices so the one that I got it came with it's a 7 by 14 box and but of course the V nose adds about a foot or a foot and a half or two foot so if you if you want to count the V nose it's a uh, 7 by 16 but technically it's called a 7 by 14 because the V nose doesn't really count um, but it's six, seven foot interior, I'm sorry, so from the roof to the ground, or from the roof to the floor is seven foot, um, so it's a seven by 14 by seven height. Um, it came with aluminum sidewall vents. I have one on one side of the wall that I'm going to be leaving in for the trailer. And then the other one is located on the passenger side bottom bottom back side of the trailer and I'm, I'm probably going to end up leaving that one installed also because I plan on putting a lot of my electrical stuff under the bed in that area so just in case it ever needs to you know vent I'll have it there just to be on the safe side um but let's see what else I ended up getting a white exterior it's a 0 0.30 metal which is pretty good um, they do come a little bit thicker but that's an extra upgrade they also come a lot thinner than 0 0.30 I know I talked to one dealership where they came in 0 0.24 and that's a super super thin exterior um, aluminum metal sheet so I, I just I didn't really want to go with that size I didn't want to go with that trailer in particular so I ended up um, talking to Katie at Boss Cargo and she was really awesome to work with um, great great experience altogether I mean they were really good to me when I found out that the trailer light hookup wouldn't work out, so I had to leave the trailer parked there overnight. There, it was just a really great experience, and I would highly recommend them. So if you do decide to get a cargo trailer, call and talk to Katie. She was awesome. Um, so that's really that's really all I have to say about that right now. Um, the actual trailer was built at Titanium, which is the builder the the company that actually builds them is also located right there in Douglas, Georgia. She was telling me a little bit about that company. Um, I think they're a fairly new dealership and they've they've really really done well within their first couple of years from what I've heard and it's because they make really great trailers. They're sturdy, um, they they just they look great. I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, but I think that's going to be it for now. Let's go check it out here in a little bit. I'll talk to y'all later. Hey guys, so we're going to get started on tearing all of these plywood walls out. 
um, taking the trim off, taking the plywood off so we can get some insulation in behind those walls. So I'm starting out with a 20 volt Colma wear drill. It's been doing pretty good so far. Um, my flathead screwdriver, the hammer that I've been using, but I've kind of found that it's a little bit difficult to get it into some of those little nooks and crevices. So I'm also using, along with the little flathead screwdriver, a butter knife also. <laughs> I've found that it's a lot easier, more handy to use it up on the top. So I will check back in with y'all when I get all of this trim took down, the plywood walls off, and we can get started on the insulation. Okay, so if the manufacturer that you got your trailer from has done any caulking around the bottom or around the top, which is a good thing. I mean, that just shows that they've, they've put a little bit more effort and work into it. Um, but we're going to have to recaulk and seal all this anyway. So having a little bit of trouble getting this bottom piece of trim off, but I've come prepared. <laughs> so I'm just going to take the box cutter that I got and just kind of cut along that trim. May have to go over it a few times. But it seems like it's coming off pretty easy. You may even want to use like a scraper to scrape that extra off. But all of this is going to get covered anyway eventually. There it goes. Looking for a better way to get up out of bed instead of getting on the internet and checking a new hit get up. First shot, pimp strut, walking. A little bit of humble, a little bit of cautious. Somewhere between like Rocky and Cosby's for the game. Nope, nope, y'all can't copy up. Bad, moonwalking. And this here is our party. My posse's been on Broadway, and we did it all way. Chrome music. I shed my skin and put my bones into everything I record to it. And yeah, I'm on. Let that stage light go and shine on down. Got that Bob Barker suit game and Plinko in my style. Money, stay on my craft and stick around for those pounds But I do that to pass the torch and put on for my town Trust me, on my I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T shit hustling Chasing dreams since I was 14 with the four-track bussin' Halfway across that city with the back, 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 back question Labels out here, now they can't tell me nothing We give that to the people, spread it across the country Labels out here, now they can't tell me nothing we give it to the people, spread it across the country Here we go back, this is the moment Tonight is the night, we'll fight till it's over So we put our hands up like the ceiling can hold us Like the ceiling can hold us Here we go back, this is the moment Tonight is the night, we'll fight till it's over So we put our hands up like the ceiling can So damn grateful, I grew up really wanna go fronts, but that's what you get when Wu Tang raised you. Y'all can't stop me. Go hard like I gotta eat away in my heartbeat. And I'm eating at the beat like it gave a little speed to a great white shark on shark. We walk, time to go off, I'm gone. Two says goodbye, I got a world to see. And my girl, she wanna see Rome. See, so make you a believer now. Nah, I never ever did it for a throne. That validation comes from giving it back to the people now. Nah, sing this song and it goes like Raise those hands, this is our party. We came here to live. So I got all of the trim off. Um, the hardest part, it went pretty quick. It only took me about an hour and a half. But the hardest part that I've found so far, just depending on what kind of trailer you have, this back piece, this last piece of trim, you actually have to take out the screws 
on this aluminum guard for the back door before you can get that piece of trim off. So let me show you. See what I'm talking about? How the trim goes up under the aluminum piece right there. So what I'm gonna do is it's just a square head bit. I'm just gonna take the drill and undrill those screws to get it out. I've already did this side over here so you can kind of tell what's going on. And that aluminum piece will just kind of hang in place right there because it's attached on the other side also. But it gives you the the space right there to take that trim off and then to get these plywood wall pieces off as well. And then all you have to do is just save the screws and drill them right back in. Y'all, I'm in love with this little tool right here. So I realized that my drill would not unscrew these screws over here at the top of the door because they're square bit screws, right? You can kind of see that. Well, this, and I got it off Amazon for like $16. It come with a four set of different screw head bits. And it'll tell you right on the front the sizes, the shapes. And I've literally got like four square screw head bits in this thing. And I found one to fit. Isn't that awesome? Easy peasy. Okay, so y'all don't mind me for real. I know I'm looking a little bit rough today, but now we got to get all of the staples out, okay? We got to get the staples out of the plywood. We got to get the staples out of the trim. And let me show you this really cool trick that I've learned along the way. Check these out. These are just a pair of pliers, right? And this is literally what they're made for, I think. I think this is what they're made for. Check this out. You see this guy? gotta go so all i've been doing is wrapping the pliers around the staple and then just rolling literally just rolling and pull that's it super easy well i broke my first drill bit I had to get a new one. <laughs> All right, so I don't know how helpful this is going to be, but if you notice any of the screws in the plywood while you're taking the walls off, if you notice that any of them are at an angle and you're trying to take that screw out and the drill is just a turn in, what you can do instead of breaking the bit like I have, what you can do is just take a screwdriver and with an exchangeable bit, it's got the same size as the one I'm using in my drill. And I'm not that strong, guys, but I've noticed, because I've done it a couple of times already, I've noticed if you just take that screwdriver and turn it to the left, loosening up that screw, you can get the drill to get it out the rest of the way. All you got to do is just loosen it up with the screwdriver if it's at an angle, and then the drill can do the rest. All right, so we got the last piece of plywood off of the walls. Looking good. And also, I have been labeling all of the pieces of plywood as I take them off the wall, just on the back side. And I've also decided to keep all of my screws as well. Because wood tapping screws are not cheap, and I can probably reuse them afterwards. All right, so we're probably gonna get started on caulking next. Be right back. Okay, so I know I wanna make sure that all of the seams in between the aluminum sheets on the outside um, and also the roof where the, seam, the aluminum seams meet the metal, I'm definitely going to make sure that those are sealed with caulking also. Now, I've debated a little bit on the bottom part where it has like a tiny, tiny little space. I'm thinking on the bottom that I'm not going to use caulking just because 
if any water was to get in the trailer by chance, where would it go? You know what I mean? So I want to leave a little bit of space, um, kind of still weatherproof and um, insulated, but just maybe a little bit of space on the bottom without caulking. So just in case there was ever to be a little bit of moisture or I, I doubt there'll be a leak after I get done with this, but if there was ever to be like a little bit of moisture or water that did get in, that it would have somewhere to go. So I'm thinking that I'm probably just going to do a little bit of spray foam along the bottom and not do the ceiling there probably just all around the roof at the top and then in between the seams on the wall so i've heard some really really great things about lexel caulking it says that it's a tough elastic sealant for every job sticks to almost anything it's instantly waterproof cured sealant mildew and mold resistant and it's paintable i think it's pretty cool that it's clear so I bought a six pack of it. <laughs> I'll have plenty enough, hopefully, to do the whole trailer and then maybe have a little bit extra. Um, but I've heard really, really great things about this stuff. So I'm going to figure out how to use this caulking gun and then I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, so check this out. Um, we've got this bad boy almost loaded. <laughs> But what I want to show you is I found out that if your caulking has a seal on the inside, I don't know if you can see that like aluminum barrier seal on the inside, that most caulking guns have a little tube that comes on them somewhere. And all you've got to do is use that tube to puncture the inside and then you can use it. So what I'm going to do is after that, I don't know, I might should have done a couple of plunges. I don't know. Oh, it's smelling strong now. Yeah, I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be plenty. So I'm going to just screw this lid back on and it looks like, it looks like this lid already has a little tiny hole on the outside, but what you're usually going to do and I might do that in just a second. You're going to, this is just a butter knife. This is not my box cutter, but this is an example. So if I wanna make this hole a little bit bigger, and it's just gonna depend on how much caulking you want to come out, how, what kind of bead that you're trying, or line, or whatever it is that you're trying to put it, how much you want to come out is gonna depend on where you cut it. So I'm probably fixing to get my box cutter and just barely, barely chop the end off at a 45 degree angle because, um, well, that's what the pros say is the best way to get a straight line. So that's what I'm going to do to start with. And I'm just going to start with a little bit. And then if I need some more, I'm going to chop it a little bit more and we're going to see how it turns out. Okay, guys, so day two. Now, I know that I changed a couple of times yesterday throughout the day, but we are on day two. I got a pretty good bit done yesterday. I got all of the plywood walls off, all of the trim, the staples took out, and I got started on the caulking. Now, I pretty much got most of that done. I've got all around the top sealed really good. I've got the seams where the aluminum meets the aluminum on the inside, and I can go ahead and show that to you while I'm videoing. All right, so see right there where those seams meet? Some of that aluminum was kind of buckled out pretty good, so I just packed it on there. Now, it's kind of, it's clear, and it's kind of thick, but that's okay, because I'd rather be safe than sorry, and you're not going to see any of that anyway when all of this insulation and the walls are put up, so... There's another seam right there. I don't know if you can see that. But I've got one more place that I want to get to before we get started on painting the beams. And that's going to be right there at the Venos, where that stone guard meets the aluminum on the inside. You can kind of see, and I already did this section. 
but I have not done any of that because I wanted to show you. Some of those seams are buckled out pretty good. So, I mean, obviously you're not gonna wanna put another hole in the trailer. So I'm just packing that caulking on. I am putting like two, three layers on, however much it takes, and then just wiping it flat with my finger, doing it again. I mean, that's gotta be sealed up. It may not cause any damage, but you would rather be safe than sorry. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up caulking that and we can get started on painting the steel beams. Now what I mean by that is some of these beams are already painted. Like you can see at the top, and I think some cargo trailers come with their, all of their beams already painted. Now mine are just kind of painted at the top and then it kind of fades into bare, bare metal. I'm not real sure how many are like that and how many are not but that might be something that you want to check for because just depending on how long you plan on using this trailer you want to make sure that that's all weatherproofed and protected from the elements i mean it is going to be all sealed up but i'd rather be safe than sorry so what i've got is some white gloss rust-oleum enamel paint and i'm going to use white because i feel like that may keep it a little bit cooler rather than the black and if not then it'll still be protected so why not do it anyway <laughs> but um some of the beams I, I don't really see any rust on there i don't know if you can see that but some of them are kind of already starting to discolor a little bit and this is a brand new trailer so it's not real bad it's just kind of a discoloration but i'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway because, call me paranoid, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So, and what, what that's also going to do is protect the metal. And my goal is to kind of create a thermal barrier also. Because I'm putting about one inch foam board insulation. Because that's the thickness of those beams right there. But, I don't know, if you do your research, I don't know how many of you have looked up thermal barriers before but when we're talking about insulation when you have a foam board piece right there um, in between the aluminum and the wood that's going to keep about a if it's an inch thick it'll be about a 0.5 or a 5 insulation which is pretty good but now when you have these metal beams on the outside aluminum touching metal touching wood there's no insulation there and that's what a thermal barrier is called so it doesn't really do a lot of good to have insulation in between all of those beams if you're not going to cover up that metal somehow or another now i've seen a lot of people use like hvac tape which I'm gonna do also after I put the insulation in. But while I've got these walls off, I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of white enamel paint on there also to protect it and just to maybe keep it a little bit cooler in here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up on that and then I'll check back in with y'all later. Okay, well, I think we can tell that I'm not a professional, but, um, so this is how the first round went. This is just the first section. It went pretty well, actually. I probably put a little bit too much on there, but I just put a whole bead all across the top and then smeared it in with my finger really good. So it looks like it's really, really well sealed, but I probably used way too much. So I think it'll get better as I move along. It's to be continued. But here's some things that you may need before you get started. Um, I decided to pull out the gloves because they're obviously kind of necessary. Um, an extra rag just in case. And then your caulking and your caulking gun. Alright guys, I'll be back. So I've got started painting the beams. I started with the front of the beams, and I've got about halfway through. I left off one or two places that I just caulked because I want that to dry first. But um, let me show you what I'm doing and what I'm using. 
So I'm using this Rust-Oleum Gloss Enamel Paint. And before I'm going over the beams, I'm just using a piece of, I think, I can't remember what size grit this is. It's just some leftover sandpaper that I had from something else. And all I'm doing is just real gently going over the beams. And that's just to kind of dust off any extra debris that may be on there. And not really to scratch them up, but just to kind of scuff them up enough to where that paint will stick real good. Um, but like I said, I got the front part done. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to finish the rest. And I will check back in with y'all later. Okay, so I got done with about two coats of paint on all of the beams. It looks pretty good. It's that enamel paint, so it's supposed to be gloss, but it actually kind of has a matte finish to it, and it's on there pretty thick, so I'm happy with it at this point. Um, next, I am going to put a protective coat of polyurethane over the plywood that's already on the floor. So right now, I'm just kind of prepping. I just got done sweeping. Um, I have the shop back out here, so I was vacuuming the corners where I couldn't really get the room. And right now, I am peeling off all of the excess caulking that was on the floor. That's not quite an easy task. So I've been using a, I wish I had a paint scraper, but I do not have one available to me right now. So I'm just using a flathead screwdriver. I'm going over it a couple of times and then I'm kind of just rolling it back and then pulling it all off. Um, I've got most of it done. This is the last little section right here. I'm gonna go over with the, the vacuum one more time to make sure the wood's really nice and clean. And then like I said, I'm gonna go over with a coat of mineral wax polyurethane and I can I can leave a link for that in the description below but any kind of wood sealer especially polyurethane would be a really really great idea to seal the plywood with before you put anything on top of it I mean that's just your choice if you want to put some insulation in here before your flooring if you want to um, put insulation up underneath the trailer that's an option also um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of layers of eco, um, it's like an eco based insulation, but it's particularly for flooring and it's soundproof. Um, I'll, that'll be coming up in one of the next videos and I'll show that to y'all and leave a link for that also. But, um, so I'm fixing to get done pulling all this caulking off and then get that coat of poly on. I'll see y'all in a bit. So we just went and picked up all of the insulation from Home Depot. We've got about eight one inch foam board insulation. I've got some two by fours to put the window in um, and a couple of extra pieces for some other things also. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this when we get back home, and I'll talk to y'all in just a bit. Hey y'all, so I got home and I'm just kind of experimenting around with the insulation this far. I've cut a couple of pieces, measured it out, and cut. It's a lot messier than what I thought it would be just using my box cutter. Um, I'm also using a jigsaw blade to cut it all the way through, um, but let me show you what I'm doing right now. So I started putting these two pieces of foam board in. I measured it out a couple of times and then I slid that foam board in. And I noticed that some of the screws up on the top, you can kind of see what I'm talking about right there. Um, I didn't caulk those. So I actually went back with the caulking and I put one more layer in some places right there on the upper seams and I also, I haven't done those two yet, but I did all of the ones 
on this side. All of those screws that are up there coming through the roof, I just went ahead and caulked around those also. I don't know if you can see it, but it's clear. So, um, so I went ahead and did that. And I also have started with some of the spray foam because I think what I want to do is go ahead and get in some of those deep, in some of those deep places, like you can see right in there. And then I have not done this one. Let me move that board out the way. So I haven't done down in, down in that crack right there. What I'm doing is spraying some of that... I have a can of Loctite, and then I also have a can of this Great Stuff spray foam insulation. And it covered, they have some that covers up to three inches. This can in particular covers up to about one. And I have a couple of cans of this. What I'm gonna do before I continue with the cutting the foam boards and putting those in, is I'm gonna go down through all of those deep, deep crevices where you can kind of even see what's going on right there i'm gonna spray some fr some spray foam <laughs> about one inch down in there and um leave enough space to where i slip that foam board in that it can kind of have enough room there on the bottom so that is what i'm doing as of right now um i'm probably not going to start cutting any more of the foam boards until tomorrow because I want all of that caulking that's another layer and then around those screws I want all of that to dry and then I also want all of that spray foam that I'm going to be spraying in the bottom right there I want that to dry overnight also so I will check back in with y'all tomorrow I'm going to be out here all day working and that should be I should be enough to cover all of the walls, what I'm thinking. And then I'm going to make another trip when I decide how much I'm going to put on the ceiling and the floors. I think I'm going to do about an inch and a half on the ceiling. And then I haven't really decided exactly. I think I'm going to use that eco board on the inside of the trailer for the floors. And then I, I may put some of the foam board insulation up underneath the trailer along with some some rhino guard to cover all that up and protect it really well but i also want to make sure that it's really it keeps really cool in here during the summertime and then in the winter time keeps really warm so i will check back in with y'all tomorrow bye I have got to go in and get a shower because I am filthy <laughs> but I wanted to show y'all what all I got done today so I got all of the foam board insulation put up on the walls we're gonna do the ceiling and the floors in another episode um, this series isn't gonna be in any certain particular order I'm just gonna be kind of filming and showing all the process as I go I'm gonna try to keep it somewhat somewhat grouped together but it's just going to be as i go so we're going to do the floors and the ceiling in another episode um, but let me show you where we're going to leave off today so i've got all of those foam boards in i've started taping in a lot of the sections i haven't decided if i'm going to use spray foam right here on that section that is the only part in the whole trailer that's like that um, so I haven't really decided if I want to use some more spray foam or if I want to cut just a really, really thin piece of that foam board because I do have a little bit left over still from the walls. Um, but I have to get one more can of spray foam anyway because this is the only section that I have not got done. I ran out as I was doing it, so I want to put a little bit more in that in that section so I have those two panels to put up and then I'm going to go ahead and finish off taping I've got that part done I've got some above the door but for the most part all of that insulation is put in on the walls at least 
So as of right now, I think what I want to start doing next, I do have a window that I want to put in at, at some point soon. It's about a 14 by 22, I think. I'll have to show you show that to y'all in the next video. But um, right now, I think I want to reuse these plywood panels. Don't mind that messy garage, y'all. But I think I want to reuse the plywood boards that I put up. So what I've been doing is using this it is plastic wood filler. And it goes on pink and then it dries a natural color. And it's been working out really well so far. You can kind of tell where I patched up all of those holes and it's kind of dried already. I do have a sander so after all of that dries I'll be going over it with a sander. And then what I'm going to do is be cutting, cutting those plywood walls into about 6 to 8 inch um, pieces and creating a shiplap vibe, a shiplap look on the walls. Um, and then I'll also be painting it as well. But we're going to go ahead and sign off here and all of that's going to be coming up in the next episode. So I will see y'all next time. All right, guys, so so one part of the video that I left off that, that does have to do with with prepping um, I coated the floors with a ro uh, paint roller with a coat of this mineral wax fast drying polyurethane. Um, I tried to do two coats of it to protect that wood before I put any kind of flooring in. Um, I, I didn't record that part because it was kind of late at night and I wanted it to dry overnight. Um, but I was just showing you the can of poly that I used. I'm going to leave links for all of the products that I used in the first video for, for prepping and getting the insulation in. I'm going to leave the links for all of those in the description box below. So the next video we're going to get the window in. We're going to start putting the walls up and I will see y'all next time. You see this guy? Gotta go. So all I've been doing is wrapping the pliers around the staple and then just rolling. Literally just rolling. And pull. That's it. Super easy.
broke my first drill bit. <laughs> so I had to get a new one. <laughs> Alright, so I don't know how helpful this is going to be, but if you notice any of the screws in the plywood while you're taking the walls off, if you notice that any of them are at an angle and you're trying to take that screw out and the drill is just determined, what you can do instead of breaking the bit like I have, what you can do is just take a screwdriver and with an exchangeable bit, it's got the same size as the one I'm using in my drill. And I'm not that strong, guys, but I've noticed, because I've done it a couple of times already, I've noticed if you just take that screwdriver and turn it to the left, loosening up that screw, you can get the drill to get it out the rest of the way. All you got to do is just loosen it up with the screwdriver if it's at an angle, and then the drill can do the rest.